So I know a lot of us are here today. Well, I'd say all of us are here today because we're interested in catching the attention of young talent and more specifically Gen Z. And I think we can get overwhelmed with kind of what's the next viral TikTok trend or what are the new tools out there. But what I wanted to do today is just share some learnings that myself and my team uh, have learned over the past two years of really growing an early careers function from scratch and some things that might help you in your teams as you're setting out to build uh, early career functions and attract your next talent, whether it's internships, apprenticeships, uh, or graduate programs. So who am I? Um, I'm an early careers engagement lead at Booking.com. Uh, I'm originally from Canada, but I moved to the Netherlands, to Amsterdam, where I'm based uh, two years ago. And the dream job and dream company stars really aligned and coincided with Booking.com starting an early careers function. Um, and part of my role is building and scaling early careers programs within the Netherlands and the UK. And more specifically, I look at leading partnerships to really attract uh, young candidates to come work for us, whether that's events, social media campaigns, um, or anything in between to really capture the attention of uh, these job seekers. So today I'll be looking a little bit at who we are as Booking.com. Someone this morning told me they're a genius level three person. So I feel like many of you have probably used uh, Booking.com in the past already, but I'll go over who we are as a company and uh, our early careers journey and what brought us here today kind of set the scene for where what we've been doing for the past couple of years. Um, and then I'll kind of go over in more details who are Gen Z. So what really makes up this generation? And then dive into a few observations that my team and I have had over the past couple of years um, of what really works well and resonates with this generation when it comes to recruitment. And then what our responses have been in terms of those trends and how we've really uh, tailored our recruitment and engagement process to really react to some of these trends that really work with Gen Z when it comes to online and offline engagement and attraction campaigns. So I'll first set the scene about Booking.com. So when we look at what our mission is, we're really focusing on one big question. So how do we actually make it easier for everyone to experience the world? And to do that, we have a really big uh, network of talent across 140 offices in 70 countries. So uh, a large uh, workforce. And in our headquarters in Amsterdam, we have over 5,000 employees. When it comes to early careers and our early career programs, uh, we're really focused on two main hubs. So in Manchester and in Amsterdam. And our roles are really tech focused. So um, we're looking at software engineering, graduate programs, internships, uh, apprenticeships, um, and then also data science and analytics graduate programs. So those are where our two main tech hubs are. Um, and even though you might not be recruiting specifically for tech roles, hopefully some of our learnings will still resonate with your teams and you can still um, apply them. But how did we get here? Uh, so we didn't always have an early careers function. Um, and I just want to preface this by saying, but we might have nice slides with nice pictures and stuff. But if you flash back to two years ago, our early careers programs were non-existent. And we started this team and we said, OK, how do we actually get Gen Z candidates to apply for our program when there's nothing really to kind of to show for and how do we capture the, um, the really the hearts and the attention of this uh, generation? without having anything to kind of prove that it's a really good program to join. So now the dilemma was that although we have a really good uh, consumer brand, we really wanted to translate that to how do we build an early careers program brand based off of that. So the task was to really build offline and online engagement strategies. Um, so that can look like social media, events, um, but anything to really uh, capture the attention of this generation. And I'd like to share how we did that. So when we look at who we're actually trying to target, Gen Z is anybody born between the ages of 1997 and 2012. So when we're looking in terms of ages, that's anybody between the ages of 12 to 27. Um, they come after millennials and they precede Generation Alpha. And it's good to note that in 2024, um, around 24% of the UK workforce was Gen Z. And when we look at 
2030 and what's expected to be kind of the population of Gen Z um, in the workforce, we're looking at 33%. So not only is this something to keep in mind in terms of our attraction campaigns, but really something to prioritize as you're building uh, your engagement campaigns. So now that I've laid out our story and kind of how we got to where we are today, um, I first wanted to share a few trends that we really observed as a team, starting off with the first one. So we found that Gen Z really comes to our events, our career fairs, that type of thing, with some skepticism of anything corporate. So I see a few people nodding in there and you might have had some encounters where uh, you get some Gen Z candidates questioning what you're doing. Um, and I think this really comes down to this is a generation that has always had an overload of information. So when it comes to maybe looking at um, Glassdoor reviews of what um, employees are really feeling like or Reddit threads with anything of everybody kind of pulling back the curtain and sharing exactly what happens at their company. And I think what this has built is a generation of job seekers that are really uh, a little bit skeptical of our typical recruitment sales pitches. And they don't want to be kind of sold to with our, our typical kind of just recruitment approach. Um, they're used to questioning things and really looking for the truth and transparency of what our early career programs are like. The second big trend that we've noticed is that although Gen Z candidates might be digital natives, they really crave community. And I know a lot of uh, the conversations today have revolved around should we kind of focus in on in-person experiences or go full force into digital or uh, remote interviewing or experiences. Um, and I think what we've noticed as a team is although there's still a time and a place for uh, digital experiences, this generation still really values connection and bonding and creating a community. And I think this really comes from um, of the past couple of years, they may have done their uh, education online or remotely. And so coming out of the pandemic, they're really looking kind of to build those types of friendships and belonging and really find their footing um, through their first job. The last main finding that we observed as a team as we've kind of been on our journey the past couple years is that um, this generation is really impact oriented. So they're really hungry to make a difference the, step, the second they step into their first job um, and they're looking to really progress within their career at a rapid pace. So this, um, they've had a really keen sense of the world and they're really looking to kind of find that purpose as soon as they enter the workforce. So now that I've gone over some of the trends, I wanted to kind of uh, take a step further and see, show you how our, our team has reacted to these types of trends when it comes to our engagement strategy. So up first, we have skepticism of anything corporate. So in order to really counteract this kind of skepticism or kind of uh, knower of all knowledge of what's happening behind the scenes at companies. Um, we found the best approach is to build our early careers brand based on authenticity. So uh, really engaging with real life employee stories and experiences and leading with that versus more scripted and formal uh, approach. Um, and I'd like to break that down a little bit further into how that can translate to offline and online engagement. So from an offline engagement perspective, so this can be anything kind of what you're doing to engage talent um, in person. Uh, the first thing that has been really, really useful for us is to build a campus ambassador program. So this program is something that we uh, leveraged our current Gen Z employees that are already with us, whether they're in one of our graduate programs or other early career programs, and really equipped them and empowered them to head out on campus with us or participate in events with us to really kind of have their voice in, in our engagement strategy. And by doing this, we like to do what we call externalizing the internal. So really showing uh, what our employees are experiences and leading with their personal stories instead of something that's just coming from our recruitment team. Um, also, by working really directly with our Gen Z employees that are already working with us from an engagement perspective, 
It's also allowed us to kind of follow their lead and they can direct us into kind of where we can meet the candidates at. So we've had a ton of help from our current program participants to say, hey, when I was a student, I attended this event or I built this hackathon with a student association and it was super helpful for us um, to go to that type of event. So really leveraging your Gen Z employees to say, hey, what would what would be useful for you and leading with that? And through our campus ambassador program, which also been really nice is we can incentivize our um, grads and interns and apprentices uh, with different milestones. So if they help us out with a few events, they can get some merch that we can give them. Always a good uh, motivator with this uh, generation. And then um, they can kind of work towards different milestones the more they help us. And then under the umbrella of our campus ambassador program, another really great way to lead with authenticity and transparency is to empower our grads to lead workshops on different university campuses. So we found that this way, the job seekers or candidates are a little bit less skeptical when it's just people kind of of their own ages or around their same experiences, or maybe they even went to that university that are telling their own stories of how they've really enjoyed the programs that we've put on. Um, and it makes them a little bit uh, less skeptical of what we're, we're selling. And this doesn't mean that you can't have input in those presentations. I think there's obviously things that as a team we wanted them to share, but it just means the tone is a little bit more informal and approachable and easier for the, um, the candidates to kind of picture themselves in those programs. And I think it was mentioned a few times earlier today, but these programs are also a really great way to develop your internal employees when it comes to public speaking opportunities or just kind of enabling them to kind of flex those muscles when it comes to recruiting. So now on the flip side, now that I've shared a bit about um, in-person experiences to kind of lead with authenticity and transparency. In terms of online campaigns, I'd say the best thing you can do when it comes to engaging Gen Z talent is self-generated uh, social media content. So this can look like day in the life um, Instagram reels, or maybe it's hopping on those TikTok trends and doing mini interviews and asking your grads what what are the best way to ace an interview? So we found that actually leading with self-generated content has outperformed some of our more professionally done video shoots that we put a lot of money and time and uh, uh, effort into. And then when we looked at the kind of overall stats, we realized, wait a second, giving an iPhone to some of our grads and telling them to go with a little bit of direction can actually outperform on our channels. So I think it just goes to show that um, leading your campaigns with kind of transparency and authenticity doesn't need to come with a big budget, but can really just be a matter of giving um, your current program participants some a few guidelines, but letting them uh, lead with that. Um, another application of kind of the online uh, side of engagement and attraction is uh, building referral and advocacy programs. So what we did at the beginning of this year, uh, as we were kind of launching our graduate recruitment campaign, is we had a kickoff session where we really equipped our current uh, grads with all the key details they needed to have and then sent them out to really help us spread the word with their own network. So whether that was templated LinkedIn posts that they could then share with their networks and really start referring their, their peers. Um, and that just, once again, just kind of changed the tone of voice from going from just only some, um, recruiting from our corporate accounts to actually leveraging some of our uh, program participants um, and using their personal experiences. So now that we've gone over kind of leading your campaigns with authenticity, transparency, and employee-led stories, the second trend that we noticed uh, was that Gen Z candidates are really digital natives, but they're really craving community. And the way that we responded to that is as an early careers team is that we intentionally set out to create a recruitment and attraction process that was really high touch and personal. And you may think that this is could be a little bit challenging, especially when we're talking about volume hiring and large numbers. I know everybody has a little bit of a different program size, but I feel like in general with early careers, we're talking about volume hiring. But this can be a really big differentiator when you're looking at your competitors. And if you can put a few different touches in and invest at the start, it can really uh, pay off. 
So now let's talk about what that looks like from an offline and online application. Um, so one thing that we've noticed is that there's definitely still uh, room for digital um, uh, campaigns, of course, but we've really noticed in our own early career program um, participants that they come into the office way more than our experienced hire. So we wanted to kind of mirror that on the attraction side and see if they're really craving kind of that personalized experience and community building. One way we found that really helps is bringing them into our office. And I think everybody has kind of a different office experience. I've heard today some people say there aren't that many people in the office and some people say it's packed. It's a really big selling feature. But I think what bringing candidates into an office can do is just kind of let them see, meet with many people and kind of feel the energy of what's happening in your office. And it's also a really an easier way to engage people to help with these types of recruitment events, because you don't need to kind of get people to head out onto a university campus, take half of their day or a full day. But it really allows you to kind of um, motivate more people internally to help out with these types of events. So these can be self-managed events such as discovery days or insight days, or they can be uh, events that are already existing, for instance, hackathons at the university setting, but then bringing those into your office just lets them kind of get a feel and see um, what they might be like if they work for your organization. Um, a second way to really embed high touch experiences into your engagement campaigns um, is to create a pre onboarding nurture journey. So this is something um, that we do between the time that our, our new hires at the early careers uh, level um, get between their offer stage and their hire stage. So I know for some that can be several months, it can be a few weeks, it can be over a year. But when it comes to creating a high touch and personal candidate experience, this is an amazing thing that is fairly simple to implement and can be, um, for instance, hosting welcome lunches or offer lunches to celebrate them coming into your organization. But if that's not a reality and you can't do something in person, um, it's also a good idea to create a newsletter or something that can just provide them a little bit of a sense of community and being part of something even before they join your organization. And then the third strategy or trend that we've noted, noticed in recruitment from Gen Z talent is that uh, they're really impact oriented and want to make a difference from the moment they join your organization and eager to kind of really hit the ground running and grow as fast as they can. So taking this into account, something that we've done is we've pivoted kind of our event strategy to really focus on practical skills that students can get and really show that the kind of what's in it for me when it comes to them attending our events. So this also goes hand in hand with the first trend that we've noticed of Gen Z candidates being a little bit more skeptical of uh, recruitment processes. Um, and because it allows them to get something really tangible at, out of all of our interactions. And if we can lead with kind of empowering them with practical skills, it also means that regardless of if they want to kind of go forward with our recruitment process, they still have a positive image with us because they're leaving with some practical skills they can use wherever they end up. But with obviously a little bit of subtle uh, recruitment uh, push in the background. So what that looks like in terms of offline and online applications here. Um, so my favorite event series that we did this year uh, was our Day in the Life Shadowing Days. So really um, some uh, best practices I would suggest are leading with professional development event and mentorship days. So what we've done with our shadowing days to really kind of empower our candidates with some practical skills um, is instead of just having a day where we have presentations in our office, what we've done is we've actually paired students with someone in a field that they're looking to pursue a career in and then having them shadow them throughout the day. And we found that in that way, um, they can really kind of see the behind the scenes of what that job would look like. And it's a little bit more of an easy jump in their head to say, OK, I could maybe pursue a career in that in that field. Um, I feel like these types of events are especially useful for perhaps 
perhaps diverse candidates. Uh, we've had a number of um, women in tech shadowing days, and that's super nice because it, it might show uh, women who are pursuing, let's say, computer science. It might show them, okay, there are a ton of um, women engineers in this company. This is something that I could see myself doing. So this is also um, one example of a skills-based events, but another way to kind of um, embed practical skills in your events are doing kind of technical lecture series on university campuses. So instead of just kind of focusing on the recruitment side, but going out to university campuses and, for instance, giving a workshop on a certain skill that your employees have. Um, and this also really goes to show uh, what impact your employees can have. If you have some grads that go out onto a university campus and give, let's say, a technical um, interviewing workshop or a coding workshop, it can show your Gen Z candidates, oh, I could potentially be doing that in a few years uh, if I join that organization. Another best practice as well for showing Gen Z candidates their potential impact at your organization is through starting a career blog. So this is something that we're at the very start of our journey in creating, but we definitely saw through our recruitment process that Gen Z candidates were super keen on knowing details about what they'd be doing. And I think that relates back to them knowing what their purpose would be, what impact they would have. And an early careers blog is a great way to kind of empower some of your current grads or apprentices to kind of dive deep into what they do on a day-to-day -day basis. And it also really goes to show that you're looking to empower your own internal employees and it shows the, um, the purpose that they have right from the beginning of their career. So these are the three strategies that we've taken on board. Um, so if I can summarize um, in terms of next steps you can take in your own early careers engagement strategies, one thing you can do is really lead with authentic self-generated content, uh, create a high-touch candidate experience, and empower students with practical skills. So those are kind of some main learnings that uh, our team has noticed throughout building our early careers function within the last two years. Um, but there's obviously a lot more to learn. So looking to see uh, what's next. I've heard lots about uh, Gen AI today. So something for our team to take back and maybe learn a little bit more about. Um, but happy to take some more questions now if you have any.